Hey, it's Justin Goff. I'm here with Troy Erickson, a Copy Accelerator member. And we're going to talk about how Troy basically over the last year went from making about 32 grand last year uh, to being on pace to make around $300,000 this year. So pretty much 10 xing his income. Uh, he's had a hell of a year. Uh, and all this kind of in the middle of a pandemic and where a lot of people are kind of really hurting and struggling and losing jobs. Troy's kind of gone the complete opposite way. Uh, and is just crushing it this year. So we're going to dive into what he's doing to, to make that happen. Uh, some of the offers he's scaling, some of his stuff with consulting. Uh, but first, before we hop into all that, I really want to go back to how you started and how you got into kind of internet marketing. Because I feel like everybody always has a very interesting story. Uh, nobody grows up and says, I want to be an internet marketer. It's not really how it happened. So I'm kind of curious how you got into this whole game. Yeah, first off, thanks for having me on here. Um, there's a lot of cool people who have been here, so I'm honored. Um, so when I was growing up, I was wanting to be a baseball player. So I guess that's more of like a common thing. Nobody grows up and says, I want to write copy. But yeah, um, I played college baseball and things kind of came crashing down. Um, a lot of mental blocks that prevented me from succeeding and it, uh, it hurt for a while. Um, I got cut as a senior in college on my team and I just kind of spiked. I rolled down into this place where I was like very, very like disappointed in myself. Um, but at the same time, like when that struggle was happening, I got into internet marketing through um, this girl's Snapchat account. It was like a really spammy ad that's like swipe up to make money online. And um, I jumped into my first course, which is how to run Facebook ads. So naturally, I barely made enough money to not get a job right after college ended. Um, I was making like $3,000 a month, maybe. And for pretty much all of 2019, I didn't really do much better than that. I was just working, like running ads, writing the copy, doing the targeting and all these crazy things. Like I was doing everything and I didn't have a network. And by December I managed to make $6,000. That was like the most I'd ever done um, in a single month. Um, so surprisingly too, um, towards the end of that year, which is when I started to like figure some things out and why the beginning of 2020 was so good, I was on vacation um, in California in, at, the end of, at the beginning of September. And one of my mentors called me, who I'd done a little bit of work for, Facebook ads, and he was like, hey man, um, my wife's about to have her child, I can't go to this event, um, like do you want the ticket? It's about marketing. It's like this Justin Goff guy, like he's pretty good. Um, and I was like, no dude, like, like I'm cruising in California right now, like just living like the life to an extent, like this is my vacation. Like, I don't want to go. He's like, are you sure? And I was like, all right, I guess. Like, we'll see what happens. And then later that day, um, I met up with Ian Stanley um, because I'd seen him on Instagram. And I was like, hey, man, do you mind if we meet? And I connected with him. We met up in Venice Beach. And he was like, hey, um, or I asked him, I said, like, what are the biggest things you've done to really grow so quickly at a young age? And he's like, I go to events. And I was like, all right, I need to go. Um, so I got my ticket to Copy Accelerator basically for free. It was paid for by my mentor. He already had it, got transferred over to me. And that just kind of blew my mind that it was possible to make more than, you know, three to $6,000 a month, basically. So I was like studying it for the rest of the year. Um, and, you know, that's kind of how I went from like three to four up to like six by December. But then when 2020 came along, um, I bought my own ticket to the event and I like knew a lot of people in the circle um, and knew Stefan really well. Um, and that's when things like really, really, really started to take off for the but, February. But going back to that first event, um, you mentioned that it, it was kind of eye opening just to see what was possible there. Um, that's something that honestly we really don't even use as like a selling point to get people to events. But uh, I hear it over and over again from newer people that getting in a room with that many successful people and seeing someone who's running a $50 million business or a $200 million business or a copywriter who's making 30 or 40 grand a month, it tends to just completely blow their mind that that's even possible. So was that kind of a big thing for you, just seeing the possibility of what other people were doing? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say the biggest thing is that I didn't know that there were so many people making that amount of money. I always thought it was only people who were like, running huge companies and they live like a very excluded lifestyle and you can never get in contact with them. Um, but then I showed up and, you know, I thought I was like doing okay. And then all these people, you know, like V shred was there. They're one of the big presenters and they're like, yeah, we're about to do a hundred million dollars this year. And I was like, 
these are regular guys just in a room and you talk to other people who are making 10, 20, 30 K a month. And it's like, I, I guess that is possible. And it's not like what everybody else has kind of told me about, you know, a regular lifestyle and a regular job. Right. I, I mean, I, I can relate to that a lot because I, I had very similar, I guess, beliefs growing up um, in a growing up in like a very Midwest small town where everybody worked real jobs for a living and nobody did, nobody really like started their own business. Nobody worked online. Nobody did anything like that. It was like my dad's worked in the same factory for, he was like 22. And uh, my mom's worked like every job from being a waitress to a preschool teacher. So that was like my idea of what work was. Um, and I have a feeling yours is probably a little similar to that. Yeah, definitely. It was, um, you know, I kind of thought like in the back of my head that maybe one day I could make like $100,000 if I kept working hard at it. Um, but it turns out that uh, you can do a lot better than that a lot quicker. <laughs> you know the right people and um, you, you learn a lot of things from them. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's very similar to mine. I, I remember graduating high school thinking if I made $50,000 a year, I would be set. I thought that was a lot of money. Um, and it's weird how as you level up, you just, the new normal just becomes normal to you. Um, and then you kind of look back on that and you're like, wow, it's kind of crazy that I thought that. Yeah, um, exactly. Let's, uh, let's jump into kind of your, your big, your big transformation. Uh, so you were making around six grand a month or so, uh, which is nothing to sneeze at by any means. Um, and then kind of this year you've really ramped it up. And like you said, you're, you're on your way to making somewhere around 300 grand this year, doing kind of a combination of selling your own products, consulting, uh, some other like copywriting work. What was kind of the big turning point for that for you? Sure. So, um, by far it was the second event I went to in uh, February, 2020. And I got lucky cause it was literally, you know, days before the country got shut down. So um just like at that time i kind of evolved a little bit from facebook ads to email copy because a lot of my facebook ad clients that i was kind of rat racing with um they couldn't scale because their emails weren't good so i i had like dabbled in email copy um and after the first event i got better from you know things that i learned and by the time that february 2020 came around um I basically knew like, okay, I want to manage email lists and write email copy. And now that I've been you know, doing a little bit of work for clients, I'm kind of a fan of deliverability, helping out with that. Um, so I'm going to position myself now as an email paramedic. I revived that email list. So I just wanted to find people that not only want copy, but they want somebody to come in and manage their list for them, make sure all the, the emails uh, you know, don't hit spam, don't hit promo, they go to primary um and they have good copy so i just showed up um and i'd been talking to Stefan. he paired me up with um, a couple of, like really really solid business owners that i still have as clients to this day and we've done like incredible things um and also i connected with people who just had some spam issues um and now i've helped them get out of it so that really like that alone after that event by april so that event was in february by April, I hit thirty-one thousand um, dollars just by managing email lists, and then also like touching up um, some people's funnels too. Because I really like it all came from the event, like all the connections, um, and with some very big business owners. Right. So I mean, there's a there's a big point in there that I, I kind of want to point out for everybody is that you basically figured out a big big pain point uh, that these business owners had, and that they were willing to pay a serious amount of money for. Um, anybody who's managing a, a big email list that makes them good money, if all of a sudden they're landing in the promo box and the spam box and losing money left and right, uh, that's a huge pain point. And they want out of that very, very quickly. And they're willing to pay good money to someone who can fix it. So I, Troy did a really good job of kind of niching himself down as the guy who can fix those kind of problems uh, and help the people do that. Whereas a lot of people make the mistake of just trying to be this like generalist. Uh, and do everything for everyone. And Troy did a really good job of just, here's exactly what I do. Here's what I can help you with. And I have a feeling you probably got a lot of referrals from other people because anybody who's like, hey, I'm having issues with my email. Who do I talk to? Anybody who's worked with you, like you're probably the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, exactly. I do get a lot of that. And just, you know, my philosophy is I just want to be different than everybody else. Um, so I really knew it was important to take that leap from just writing copy 
to going in and managing email lists because there's fewer people that can do that. And yeah, I, I do get a lot of referrals because there's just not many people that do it. And the more people you do good for in a certain circle, your name can grow very quickly. So when you're managing the email list for certain clients, give me a little feel of how that works, what you're charging. Are you taking like a percentage or is it a monthly fee? How does that work on your end? Yeah, I'll usually do like a flat fee um, for new clients until I get a feel for um, you know what's going on and can kind of establish the numbers. But basically what I'm doing um, is I'm writing a daily email I'm making sure all the emails and the autoresponders, so between the broadcast and autoresponders, all the emails, they go to the primary inbox, uh, which is not something that many other people can guarantee. Um, then I also touch up the automations as well to make sure that, you know, they have enough, uh, you know, emails in the welcome series that explain what's going on and what the person can expect in the future. Uh, make sure to add more like abandoned carts, browse abandonment, like all kinds of different series. Um, so really it's just a matter of like daily emails, touching up the automations and managing deliverability. Those are the three big pieces. And um, now my minimum is 5K a month for new clients. Um, and it just goes up from there. So how many clients are you working with currently on that on like a monthly basis? Uh, so four on a monthly basis. I recently uh, cut out a couple just because I was doing like so many things for them. Um, so yeah, I can build that back up. And at the same time, I'm also growing a small team to manage lists as well. So I still have a lot of things to figure out. Um, but on like the monthly retainer side, yeah, um, it's doing about 20 a month right now. Nice. Nice. So you got that. And then I know you recently, uh, kind of pivoted and started doing selling your own courses, um, especially around kind of email deliverability. How's that going for you now? Yeah, it's going amazing. So to kind of, you know, recap that, um, the early part of the year, the max I made in a month was 31,000, which is obviously like, it was great. Um, and then most of the months were in the 20s because, like I said, my retainer is then about 20. Um, and then I'll pick up some one-time jobs. I'll get it to about 30. And then, like you said, I started some of my own offers. I have a membership group uh, with 100 members that pay $50 a month. So that does 5K a month. And then I also sell some info products about deliverability, getting out of spam, making more money with email. Um, and then later this year in October, when I started hitting like 30 or 40, I was like, why don't I just sell this like anti promo tab code thing that I've been using for my clients. And I'm going to sell it for like a lot more in the future. But at first, um, I sold it a lot lower than I want to, but it still brought in 30 K in a single month from that. So I ended up touching 70 K in October, which was like beyond anything I could have ever imagined. I definitely had a little bit of like a weird feeling for a bit. <laughs> so that's your biggest month to date by far, right? Oh yeah, by far. Awesome. Um, so when you sold that, I'm kind of curious. I know you, I saw you promoting it on Facebook. I'm assuming you promoted it to your email list. Was that just kind of the two main avenues for that? Yeah, I did have some like Facebook issues, but um, overall, like it started really well on Facebook and then I just had to pivot, you know, sometimes that's just what you have to do. And it's like this code offer has pretty much been completely organic. Um, so yeah, like you said, I take home for, you know, part of the year um, was like very, very high and I got a little less with ads and I went back up again. So um, take home should be around 300 for the year, maybe a little more. We'll see. Nice. I'm kind of curious now that you're, you're doing multiple things here. Is your intent to kind of scale your agency side? Is your intent to do more products? Like where, where do you kind of see the next step going? Yeah, so I think products is where I'm leaning to. And, um, you know, like one-time services. But I do have the agency side because I enjoy it. I don't, it's like, I'm not exactly sure yet. Like I'll figure that out very soon. Um, but if somebody comes to me after buying, you know, a certain service or product and they're like, Hey, can you manage the list? And I like working with the person, I'll find a way to do it. That's kind of where the agency sits right now. Um, but overall I'd say just like marketing info products and, you know, doing services for people that make a huge impact in a short amount of time. is just really fun. Right. Um, so I'm kind of curious. I, I really didn't know a, a ton about your story going back. So you've really only been doing this since what, 2018? Is that right? Um, I got started in digital marketing, like in general, like about four years ago. And then I got a little more serious. Yeah, about two to three years ago. So um, and then I've only really been I, I've only considered myself a copywriter for literally a year and a half, two years. So. Do you remember like the first dollar you made? 
sorry, you broke up a little there. Do you remember the first dollar you made online? Yeah, the first dollar, um, that was on Upwork. So when I first made an Upwork account, I did a couple like gigs just to like edit like Facebook cover photos and stuff so I could get a couple five star reviews and get, get people to trust me on the site, which was like nothing special, but it was cool to get that like first dollar in. And then the first dollar made from actual like marketing. Um, I had a call with my mentor who I didn't really know at the time. He was a guy with a deep uh, East Coast accent and basically told me the proposal I sent in on Upwork was like actually detailed. And I sent, I was the only one that sounded like I knew what I was talking about. Um, so I submitted that. Um, he was like, all right, let's get started here. Let's, um, you know, work on this company. And that was like my first sales funnel. And um, it, it started off okay, eventually failed. But he hired me back for a different project because that company had a lot of moving parts and it worked the second time around for different companies. So I'm kind of curious. So you mentioned that company failing. Um, usually everybody who's in this industry uh, has a huge number of failures under their belt. I do. Uh, most of the very successful people I know do. I'm kind of curious, what were some of like your biggest failures uh, as you were kind of getting started? Sure. Yeah, so that first one, um, it was it was a meal kit service where um, they would deliver a burger to you in the mail. Like Gary V was um, a partner in it. Uh, they had Matt Brennis from Denver Broncos as a sponsor. So like it was very very big, but we, they got into the funnel game too late and it collapsed. And like at first I didn't know what to do. I was like talking to my mentor. I was like, hey man, like what do we do? Like this, you're my main client. I have no clue what I'm doing. So I'd say one thing is I banked very heavily um, on one person and I didn't build a network. I just kind of assumed that I should stay um, in the shadows and just like relax and not put myself out there. So um, that's super important. Like you have to have a circle um, because anything can change at any time. Um, and then also just really like at the beginning, just trying a lot of different things. Like I said, Facebook ads, and then I was doing ad copy. And then all of a sudden um, I jumped into email copy because I saw my clients had an issue with it. So um i also recommend like trying a lot of things at the beginning um and then as i kept going and i was trying so many different things i kept doing those things for too long like my main thing is email i i don't do a lot of other things um so i wish i would have like narrowed down a little sooner but yeah those are just some of the things i kind of noticed over time that i didn't do well and that i did do well so one thing I, I like to ask people is you've been at this for a couple of years. Um, I'm sure you've learned a ton of stuff that you wish you would have known three or four years ago. Um, let's talk about that. Let's, is there one or two things that pop in your mind where it's like, damn, I wish I would have known this right when I started. Yeah. I'd say the first thing is like um, it's possible. So whatever number you have in your head or like whatever your goal is to achieve, like, it literally is possible. You just need to, first of all, believe it and uh, solidify like some kind of network of, of people that you can like lean on and trust. Um, and once you have that, like, even if you don't have a, a pipeline of leads coming in right now, it will come. Like you just do good work for people. You show up every day, like Stefan talks about, most people don't show up. So it's like, if you show up, put in the good work, um, like that will come. And I know sometimes it takes a while, but like that will come. So take a deep breath um, and do the work, do well, um, and it'll come to you. I'd say the second thing is just don't be afraid to like be really different because a lot of times the things that we think, like an idea pops in our head and we judge it too quickly. Like, no, I can't do that because somebody else said this one thing or, um, you know, just from our childhood, sometimes we think in a certain way because a parent might've had a certain belief um, and we, force that idea out of our head too quickly. Um, but one thing I learned is just like being very open to anything um, and just thinking about what could be and then evaluating it later instead of just writing it off right away. Those are probably a couple of the biggest things that helped when I was starting out. And nice. I wish I knew them sooner. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. So one thing I, I like to end with usually on these calls is um, you've been in Copy Accelerator for a couple months now. Um, I've, I've seen the progress you've made. You're super active. You're always asking questions. You're always helping other people out. Um, you, you've really taken advantage of the network in Copy Accelerator. Uh, I've noticed that. 
if somebody's watching this and they're on the fence, they've heard about Copy Accelerator, they're thinking of joining either the Light program or Copy Accelerator. I'm kind of curious what uh, what you'd say to them. Yeah. So first of all, like you said, the network. Like I've definitely taken massive advantage of that. Um, and this is a group of people like who literally care. Like I know there's a lot of big business owners, but they will literally help you if you ask. Like it's not going to come across as annoying or spammy. Like they love it. Um, so that's one thing, the network. Like I said, I wish I had this huge network. And sometimes you do have to buy your way into a network. And it's that doesn't make it like weird. It makes it just like a great community of people who are willing to step up and spend money and grow together. Um, on top of that, my other favorite thing personally, like I love the trainings and all of that, but my favorite thing is just being able to ask any question at any time. Um, so it's like, I don't have to guess. Like even earlier today, I was writing... Um, basically a new hook for one of my clients. And I posted in there, I said, hey, Justin, I know you've taken this hook before um, with your course. Can you help me out with that? And Justin's like, yeah, here you go. Here's the script. I was like, all right, sweet. So now I can like model off of that or the same thing. It's like, Justin's willing to, to give that to me pretty much instantly, which is wild. So it's just, it, it cuts the learning curve so quickly because the network and the ability to just like pick the brain of people who have been in your shoes like years before you. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a big point. Uh, and it's something I'm a huge believer in uh, because I've seen it firsthand with the like people I've taught. Um, like when I mentored Tanner and Alec, um, they were successful way quicker than I ever was. I mean, it took me three or four years to finally like break through. And I think it probably took me at least four years, I think, to make six figures. And like those guys, like within, I think it was like 12 months were pretty close to six figures. And it's like, that was all because I knew exactly what they needed to do. And as you said, shorten the learning curve. It was just like, here, do this, do this. Don't focus on anything else. Just focus on this and you're going to be successful. Um, yeah, I mean, learning from people who have done it before, who are doing exactly what you want to do, not only does it save you a ton of money, it saves you a ton of time. It's, it's pretty obvious to me. Yeah, I think that's a good point, too, that I'll bring up to people is like, you know, saving time is honestly more important than saving money, because it's like, if you don't like do something to get help, like you're going to be in the same position later. So it's super important to get help now. And like you said, I mean, there's a lot of people in the group, like you guys are in your 30s, and you know, you're crushing it. And then we have a lot of people in their 20s. And then, you know, like, Ed is exactly 20 doing well. And then Kimmy Do is 16. And it's like, yeah. where's she going to be at when she's 20 or 30? It's like, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Um, it, 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 is, it is a good mix. And I mean, there's, we have people in the group who have been making money online since the 90s. And we have people who weren't even born in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing the, the kind of the whole cycle that we have going on. Um, awesome, man. So I'm glad that you came on. I'm glad you shared your story. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, get in touch with you, uh, read your stuff, what, what would be the best way for them to do that? Um, I would say just on my personal Facebook is really good, but also Troy at leadparamedic.com um, is my email. It's probably two best ways to get a hold. But yeah, um, I love networking with people. Like I said, it's made a huge difference for me. Cool, man. So yeah, I guess before we wrap up, I, I personally just want to say congrats on all your success this year. Uh, it's pretty inspiring to watch. I mean, to see somebody who's basically 10x their income uh, in a year, um, it's pretty fascinating. Um, and with how much your your kind of like ambition and you're such a go getter, like I I think you're kind of just getting started, which is which is really cool to see as well. Um, so definitely big things to come for you. Uh, I'm glad to see you're being being successful. Glad to see everything's taken off. So congrats on a big year, and I think next year will be even bigger, man. Yeah, thank you, Justin. I appreciate that. It you know means a lot because you guys have literally changed my life. I know a lot of people say that, but I 100% mean it. So awesome, man. All right. Thanks for coming on. Thank you.